welcome. I was raised by my mother, petite, demanding, Latina in every sense of the word, quick with a backhand to the mouth if I acted like I was grown, and hardworking. This woman, my mother, raised me to move in certainty and with the knowledge that tomorrow is not promised. There's no fear in that thinking. We were poor in the truest sense of the word, so tomorrow really was not promised. I have lived in boarding houses, in shelters, and at times with family. When we could afford a place of our own, it was often a choice between food, rent, and electricity. I have taken showers by candlelight, and I have eaten rice every day for an entire month for breakfast and dinner. But this is my mom. A, you don't question it, and B, you just don't question it. <laughs> Showers by candlelight, honey, that's called ambiance and a chance to reflect upon your day. <laughs> Rice for breakfast and dinner every day for an entire month? Baby, you better be glad you had that chance to hone your culinary imagination. <laughs> mom wasn't playing, but that's my mom putting a little flair on everything, even the stink, because, well, life is what you make it. I'll never forget the time that I told my mom that her shit didn't stink, and it certainly didn't smell like roses. And uh, she laughed and said, ha ha, but I bet my shit can grow roses <laughs> because manure is used for fertilizer. That's my mom. Now, you can't go through life with a mom like mine and not think you're gonna have some sort of mantra following you throughout your entire life. My mantra of choice, no. Not, my shit doesn't smell like roses, although I'm pretty sure she would have been okay with that too. But the words that brought me back to Tucson in 2010, life is what you make it. These words have followed me from childhood to child rearing. You see, in 2010, I moved back to Tucson from Texas, and I made the conscious decision to become a single parent. In Texas, I was unemployed, losing my home, and juggling about four therapy appointments a week for my disabled child. In short, there were zero roses growing out of my shit. By 2011, my Tucson life mimicked my Texas life. I was unemployed again, and then woefully underemployed, making $10 an hour at six hours a week, relying on food stamps, my daughter's disability benefits, to cover rent, food, utilities, and transportation. Oftentimes, I had to choose between gas to get us to and from therapy or diapers for my child. I was failing her, and I knew it. One time, the despair got so bad that I actually dialed the number to Tucson's emergency children's shelter, Casa de los Niños, in the hopes that they could come and take her and adopt her out to a family that could afford to give her everything that she needed and maybe even anything she wanted. She's a kid. She deserved that. I stared at the numbers on the screen, and I never completed the call. I kept hearing my mom's voice in my head, life is what you make it. So I put the phone down, and I moved forward without fear. This was an act of survival. Well, this was an act of rebellion. Because you see, when you're poor, you're supposed to always be poor. You're not supposed to want more or even think you deserve more. But if my mom was right about this whole life is what you make it thing, then I owed it to myself and my child to make this life 
amazing. So I did what any good Afro-Latina would do. I rebelled. <laughs> I rebelled against my present by boldly declaring my future. I rebelled against my present by not having a backup plan, but simply a plan. I rebelled against my present by believing that all doors of opportunity were already open to me. They were just waiting for me to sashay my way through them. <laughs> and I rebelled against my present by whispering to myself every single night, this is not where my story ends. This is not where my story ends. Say it with me. This is not where my story ends. That night, I laid claim to my life, plain and simple, and I began to live it as if I was already who and what I wanted to be. And you know what? After some time, I started to see some roses peeking through my shit. <laughs> so I'm here today to tell you that the same is possible for you. You can be and do anything you want to do in this life because it is yours. It's not hers. It's not his. It's yours. You decide and determine who and what you are. When I tell you that these words, life is what you make it, has been with me since childhood, I'm really not kidding. Let me tell you a little story. When I was about eight years old, I turned, decided that I was going to be the best kid on skates in my town. That's me eight years old. All I had to do was conquer the giant hill in Crocheron Park. This hill had trees straight up and down the center. So really, it was kind of more like paved peril than an actual hill. One false move, and I would bust my behind and go tumbling all the way down. I remember I asked my mom if I could do this, and she said, sure, go ahead, it's your life. And then I asked if she would do it with me, and she said, ha ha, nope. You see, mom was no dummy, but she was also no enabler of fear. My mom knew that I was terrified to go down this hill, but she refused to enable that fear in me and let it stop me from trying. Let me repeat that. She refused to enable that fear in me and let it stop me from trying. That's something, right? So I trudged my narrow behind on up that hill, because at one point in time it was actually narrow. <laughs> Put on my skates, stood up, and then stared down my path to glory. It was do or die. I kept hearing my mom's voice in my head. It's your life. <laughs> it's your life. But then I remembered her words. Life is what you make it. My mom sat on top of the opposite hill, staring me as I contemplated this mess I'd gotten myself into. Me? Well, I stared down at this hill long and hard. <sighs> Hail Mary, full of grace. <laughs> the Lord is with thee. Um, um, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. You got that, Mary? Death, it's happening today. And then off I went, picking up speed with each skate slide. It's your life. Life is what you make it. It's your life. Life is what you make it. It's your life. Life is what I made it. And then before I knew it, I had arrived at the bottom of that hill with my knees and my confidence in check. Boom. I was the best kid on skates in my town. Until I wasn't. See, I repeated this routine over and over again, waving to my mom with more and more vigor each time. Hi, mom. Hey, mom. What up, mom? Yo, mom! This last time, I didn't wave. I hollered. I hollered bloody murder because that hill had just tried to swallow me whole as I tumbled three quarters of the way down it. I arrived at the bottom of that hill a hot, bloody mess. But I was a hot, bloody mess who had owned her life and conquered that hill. I was the best kid on skates in my town. On that day, I had set out to do something, and I did it. 
I was the best kid on skates, bloody knees and all. Hill took me out once. <laughs> Just like 28 years later, I refuse to have my story ending with my child in foster care and 38 cents in my bank account. My life was 100% mine. When I couldn't rub two nickels together or even put diapers on my child, I doubled down on the only talent that I knew I had, writing. And I wrote a children's book. And then I let my cousin convince me to publish this children's book. But that one children's book I was able to parlay it into writing gigs with various newspapers and magazines. And I stand here today and tell you that I am so proud that this one children's book is on its way to becoming a children's book series. <laughs> Thank you. I have stared down every hill I have faced in this life, said about a dozen Hail Marys, repeated mom's mantra, and then skated my way to success and ultimately freedom. So right here, right now, I have just one question for you. What's your hill? What are you backing down from? Why are you letting life tame you when you should be taming it? And for the love of all things holy, where are your skates? <laughs> I mean, sure, there's gonna be some giant hills and some even more giant trees that are hell-bound on taking you out. You can bet your last dollar on that. But you know what? Scars heal, and trees can be transplanted out of your way. So are you ready? Are you ready to go flying face first into the life that is just waiting for you? If you are, I have just one tiny piece of advice. Look out for trees. <laughs> trees will be people or things or even your own inner voice ready to trip you up at any given point in time. Remember, if a tree falls down in your path, it's already dead. You can't save it. Skate around it, step over it, but keep skating. Thank you.